In today's shrimp biology episode, you will learn how the white leg shrimp has knocked out the giant tiger prawn. Very exciting story to talk about shrimp anatomy and the reasons why Rename just exploded since the year 2000. Let's have a quick look on some of the major species of shrimp farmed globally. So starting up with the giant tiger prawn or the black tiger prawn, Ineos monodon, it is a species that has originated in Asia. And at the bottom you see the white leg shrimp, also known as the Pacific white shrimp, Lithopedeus venome, native to the eastern Pacific coast. So if you think of the Sonora in Mexico, what comes to your mind? To my mind it comes uh, the desert of Sonora. So this will tell you a lot why this is such a tough uh, shrimp. So here's some pictures so you can see why it's also called the black tiger prawn. Just uh, from this photo I took in a uh, fish market in Hong Kong a few weeks back. And here you have the more humble white shrimp or venomate. Other species that I'm bringing here is the kuruma prawn or marsupineus uh, japonicus and the banana prawn, the neus mergiensis. So there you have the kuruma prawn also from the same uh, live fish market in Hong Kong. It's one of the most uh, beautiful, I think, species because it can really show ripple bending patterns. And here, what it looks to me like a banana prawn or white whiten uh, prawn. Over here, I put them all together. You can have a look on the price. For the cheapest one is the Pacific white because it's the most abundant. And there you, you have it. Then about double the price will be for banana and the tiger. And almost twice that price, uh, but also that shrimp is a bit bigger, is for the kuruma prawn. That has all to do with production and availability. That's all nice and good, but let's have a look at the volume in production of the species which are farmed globally. And you see there's just really two species more significantly one species which is uh, the venom shrimp or the pacific white shrimp or the white leg shrimp which has taken over and has skyrocketed production since the early 2000s let's have a look at the general anatomy of a shrimp and this will be very important for the understanding of why venom has taken over monodon so starting from the head and going to tail, you see that the spiky thing they have at the tip of the head, it's like the, the unicorn, uh, it is called the rostrum, right? And then you have the, the carapace and of course uh, six uh, abdominal segments in the tail, which ends in another spiky piece called the telson. So the rostrum and the telson are the main defense mechanism, you see it's not a significant defense mechanism against uh, predators, which is only, uh, you know, the spike, but the overall uh, shell is uh, in, 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 in quite soft if you compare to a lobster or a crab, for instance. Then looking at the bottom part of this, going from head to tail, the walking legs, which are five pairs, are called periopods. The swimming legs are called pleopods and the fan tail it has at the back it's called uropod. So this uh, with the periopods, pleopods and uropods, this will help the shrimp to move along. Of course, uh, shrimp will move by three mechanisms. Will be either walking through the substrate, will be swimming through the water column or flicking backwards, a jerky movement, shooting itself backwards to escape a predator. Another important part of the shrimp anatomy are the antennas. And it is also important for the farm manager to have a look at the overall health of the animal. The antenna extends almost over the shrimp whole body and it will be smooth to the touch. One of first look that you can see if the animal is happy or not, or healthy or not, is if it has intact antennas, or if the antennas show uh, roughness to the touch when you slide uh, 
you pinch fingers across the antenna, it can be a signal of stress in the animal or if the antennas are broken. Okay, but now after this uh, shrimp anatomy 101, what does it have to do really what the story of this video is all about? Okay, if we look at the ventral portion of a shrimp or the underneath part of a shrimp, you will be amazed how you can now easily identify a male shrimp from a female shrimp. However, not all telecoms are made the same. The males actually transfer a package of sperm to the females. And depending on the species, the telecom can be characterized as, in general terms, open telecom or closed telecom. And here in the telecom, that lies the answer why Vename has overtaken Monodon. Vename shrimp has an open telecom, whereas Monodon has a closed telecom. But what does it mean? It means that the male Vename it can pass on its spermatophore to the female shrimp to its telecom and the female shrimp it can lay its eggs from a few minutes to almost a day at any time and then as the eggs are released they are fertilized and go into water. It means that the male can lay its uh, spermatophore on the female at pretty much any time. However, with the giant tiger prawn that has a closed telecom system, what happens is because the telecom is closed, the male can only pass its spermatophore when the female has molted and is soft shell. So the spermatophore is kept uh, inside and not until the female has fully hardened its shell and is completely ready to release its eggs that it will be used for fertilization. Therefore, in the female of the giant prawn, the window of time for the male to pass on its uh, spermatophore is much reduced than compared to the white leg shrimp. In addition, the spermatophore is kept for much greater time and as everything has a end date, the chance of the sperm going bad if stored for uh, many days or uh, potentially uh, weeks mean that there will be much greater reproductive challenges to have successful fertilization. This little quirk in the reproductive biology of the giant tiger prawn has made domestication much more difficult. Actually, it has been a challenge not yet overcome. For this reason, we can very well say that the giant tiger prawn has not been yet dom fully domesticated. And if an animal hasn't been domesticated, it makes it very hard to farm at a high industrial scale level because farmers don't have constant and reliable access to the feeds. So this means that still today, farmers and hatchery managers have to go back to the wild to find females in reproductive season bring them to the hatcheries and then use them. So the ability to domesticate a species means that when we're moving to intense commercial or industrial production, you can take the next step beyond just producing animals, but then applying genetic selection on them. You can't do selective breeding or utilize genetic tools to improve the performance of a species if it hasn't been domesticated, if you aren't able to fully close uh, a life cycle from one generation to the next without a glitch. And this is the Achilles heels of Monodon. So for Vename, a lot of companies can develop genetic improvement programs for uh, 
disease resistance, for higher growth, and this has been much of a challenge and many programs have ultimately failed in terms of improving monodome. Farmers need a reliable source of seed which can be obtained all year round, period. There are, however, other advantages in farming Penelus venemy and we'll go through each one of them. One could say that monodon is bigger, it has a faster growth rate, it looks uh, amazing with all of those stripes. When it's cooked, it's much pinkier, even reddish. It, it is, uh, hands down, a much better looking shrimp. And for these reasons also, it fetches a higher price. So what was the downfall of monodon? We're saying what are the biological attributes and the advantages of venome? Ease of obtaining reliable spawns. It is a much higher survival rates in the hatchery, over 50%, as opposed to the 20 to 40% when everything goes well with monodon. Another is salinity tolerance, where Vename you can farm. I have far experience farming in fully fresh water added to some nutrients. One could argue that Vename is slightly more resistant to extreme temperatures. I have had a pond about to be harvested of Vename where the water reached 11 degrees Celsius and nothing died. That was a very sh for a very short uh, period, but the, they, they were laying down without moving as if they were hibernating, but they didn't die, which is amazing. Perhaps the second biggest competitive advantage of Vename is that it feeds much lower in the food chain and it can take uh, and its protein requirement which is the most expensive part of nutrition in Vename can come down to 25 to 30 percent and still achieve a good growth whereas monodon it feeds much higher in the food chain is much more of a carnivore. But did you know that all of these secondary advantages in farming has everything to do with the evolution between the two? How come one species stands much greater variability in uh, extreme temperatures, extreme salinities and low oxygen than, than other, for instance? This ultimately relates to where they came from. And here lies the second main competitive advantage of Vename. Vename came from desert regions in Mexico where what happens in the desert at night, temperatures are freezing and during the day, they are scalding. So Vename has evolved over hundreds of thousands or millions of years experiencing naturally a very challenging environment where it's freezing at night and very hot during the day and it had to survive and keep on going. We could make a parallel here to the Kenyan runners, the ultramarathoners who uh, are always placed first, second, third in, uh, in these long distance races. Why? They are born in uh, high altitude environments and, and running. So they are used to uh, very challenging uh, environments where you do such activity. So it's a bit like uh, when you bring a venom to a pond, which is a challenging environment, well, it's a breeze for them compared to their hometown. Because they have all of this uh, genetically and evolutionary background, they will cope to uh, very harsh uh, farming conditions because farming is not easy on the animal. Not all farmers understand a great deal of animal biology and they try to make their best with what they have at hand. But on uh, the, the other side, the animal to be farmed for the production to reach industrial scale, that species need to be very tough. And that's the case of 
Vaname. Before I worked with Vaname, I used to work with a Brazilian pink shrimp, which is a very beautiful and tasty shrimp from the south of Brazil, but also very sensitive uh, shrimp to changes in environmental conditions. You have to be very gentle at handling because they don't take much of uh, roughness. When I was first introduced to uh, Vaname, I was at awe how resistant, how incredibly tough the animal is. We did some tests where we needed to uh, move shrimp from pond to pond, where we would keep shrimp out of the water for quite some time to compare transfers with water and without water to see which ones would give a better survival, better response and it turns out that Vename would uh, take up to five minutes out of water and still be kicking as long as the temperature was cooler than 20, 25, which is uh, naturally tough. It can take much more crowding situations and much greater stocking densities. And now you know, up to hundreds of uh, animals per square meter where monodon you know, is not built for this. The feeding efficiency of Vename is uh, much better. There has been uh, crops with less than one kilo of formulated feed to one, although in more intensive farming this number, you know, there's not a great difference in, in numbers, but for Vename uh, 1.3 to 1.6 is, is common. Whereas for, for monodon, we're talking about 1.5 and above. So in summary, it's much easier to buy seed free of diseases, genetically improved at any time of the year. The feed is cheaper. It eats less to put the same amount of weight. You can stock at a much greater densities. It survives on much lower oxygen levels, even though it affects immunity as any other shrimp. These are the reasons why Vename has knocked out Monodon. Found this video interesting? Please leave a comment below. What other topics would you like me to explore? If you haven't yet, please subscribe and share this video with other friends or students who are interested to learn more about aquaculture.